Caleb Banks, and I'm going to be teaching a world history lesson on the foundations of civilization. Our objectives are going to be to identify land and climate characteristics that are needed for human settlement. We're going to describe major characteristics of the early civilizations. We're going to look at geography's effects on people, and we're going to form generalizations about the civilizations. So last time we talked about the hunters and the gatherers. So, the hunters and the gatherers were nomadic people who migrated from place to place. They hunted wild animals and they gathered plants and berries. So, their supplies were whatever was needed for them to hunt and gather. When their food ran out, they were forced to migrate. They had special weapons and tools that were only needed to hunt and gather. They were always looking for new food sources and they couldn't actually store any food. They had to carry everything around, and they didn't really have a sense of culture. So they were basically just random groups of people who went out and did what they needed to do. But after a while, these people realized that we can actually plant food ourselves, and we can actually raise animals. So they came out with this idea, and it was known as agriculture. So once they actually started planting, planting plants, and raising animals, they grouped together to form villages because now they didn't actually run out of food. They had surpluses. So when they had surpluses and they formed their villages, these vi villages grew to become cities. And these cities became the foundations of the civilizations. So now that we have these villages, like I said, they raised and they domesticated animals. They were able to grow plants and they now had a reliable food source. Now that their population was able to grow, they now had a culture. They traded with other communities and villages that had things that they wanted or they didn't have. And they had a division of labor so that everyone wasn't doing the exact same thing. When they ran into problems such as flooding and other weather conditions like insect swarms and they had crop failures and diseases that spread it rapidly. So, like I said, these villages grew into cities, and now they needed irrigation systems so that their plants would continue to grow. And they needed aqueducts because people need water to survive. But they also needed a few other things. They needed, go they needed government. So they now needed a set of laws and someone to actually give these laws. So in Egypt, for instance, they had pharaohs. And in Mesopotamia, they had the code of Hammurabi. So now they actually formed these civilizations. They formed them around the rivers. So that's why we have the river systems. We have the Tigris and the Euphrates, the Nile, the Yellow, and the Indus. What civilization was formed around the Tigris and the Euphrates River? Yeah? Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. What about the Nile River? Yeah. Egypt. Egypt. What about the Yellow River? Yeah. China. China. And we're talking about only a specific part of Chinese history, only the Shang and the Zhu dynasties. And the dynasties basically are just time periods where families were. And what about the Indus River? India. India. And we're talking about a time in Indian time period, time history, where we're looking at the Arabians. And those are basically people that archaeologists today don't know much about. And they're still recovering things from where the Indus River flows. So all four of these system had, systems had key things in common. So what things do you think they had in common? Yeah? Deserts. Deserts. So if you look at Egypt, Egypt is in the middle of a desert. So we know that deserts basically are dry places. So they had these rivers. So what else was common for these river systems? Flooding. Flooding. So we know that they're rivers, and rivers tend to flood. So what else was common? Yeah? Trading. Trading. Like I said, they didn't have everything that they needed. So they would trade with other systems and other villages so that they can gain what they needed. Anything else was common? Um, class systems? Class systems. Like I said, Egypt had a pharaoh. And each of these systems had some sort of king or ruler that was basically in charge and led everyday law. 
Anything else was common? Right. Right. In Mesopotamia, they had these pictures called cunographs. They were like wedge-shaped. They were drawings. In Egypt, they had their hieroglyphics. China and India had their own types of writing. India, for instance, they still aren't able to decipher what their writing is saying. So, anything else was common? Yeah? Government. government. So, since we knew they had rulers, they had to have government. So, some of the key things that are needed in a civilization. First, they have to have cities, because cities form the civilization. Second, they have to have workers. They have to have a general population. Third, they need a class system. So there must be some difference between the general population and the people who are actually in the government. They need some sort of system to write and some way to keep down their records. And finally, they need technology. And when I say technology, we're looking at like these civilizations, and these civilizations actually have buildings and plumbing and China had silk and engineering and astronomy and medicine. So we're looking at these civilizations that are basically precursors for everything today. So since you said there was trading between the civilizations, an example of the trading, Mesopotamia traded with Egypt and India, and India traded with China. So it's kind of these systems were interlocked. And like you said, some of the problems, they were in the middle of a desert, so it was very hot, very dry. They had a lot of flooding, so the flooding destroyed their crops and their plants. They had natural boundaries, and those are like mountains, and they also had differences in religion. So if you're trading with another system, it's kind of my beliefs and your beliefs are very different. And finally, finally, they had problems with protection. So since they were in the middle of nowhere almost, anyone could come in and attack them. And those were mostly the people who remained to be hunters and gatherers, who wanted what they had for food. So the way we're going to look at this is we're going to take these four systems and we're going to apply them to our five senses. So you're going to be the Tigris and the Euphrates. So you're going to look at that river and tell me where that river is today. So you're going to be able to identify where Mesopotamia is on a modern map. And you're going to apply your five senses. So what might you see if you was in Mesopotamia? What might you hear? What might you smell? What might you taste? What might you touch? So we're going to do that with each group. You're going to be Mesopotamia. You're going to be Egypt. You're going to be China. And you're going to be India. So that's going to kind of be how we're going to identify what key things were common and different in these civilizations. Are there any questions? Thank you.